for the recording, what's your tag and uh, how long have you been playing? Uh, my tag, I go by Dirk Funk, and I've been playing since like somewhat competitively since like 2004 ish i would kind of play off and on for like my whole life so i just started playing again me and a buddy went to collision a couple uh months ago and then we were just kind of like you know what let's try and get good again so that's kind of where i'm at now been trying to just slowly improve i respect that a lot um what's like the average day of melee for you like what do you do when you're like i want to play melee today or i want to be well, improving or the, whatever so it changed a little bit so the the thing that kind of changed the most for me was i had been playing falcon casually for a long time and combined with doing it melee and a bunch of other stuff i've been having some wrist issues so i decided to switch off of falcon and pick up puff and potentially try out fox so the one thing that changed when I switched characters was that since I wasn't super familiar with Puff, that I would kind of start trying to, because for me, I just kind of played and played and played and just, I'd hit plateaus and just hope that eventually it'd go up. So now what I'm doing is I'm trying to just kind of slowly go through and break everything down. Like even if it's stuff that's like stupid, because a lot of stuff I think that seems easy for me. So like, like earlier today when I'm like lunch for work, what I would just mess around with doing was just, trying to get like 10 out of 10 like up throw up air you know perfect fast fall you know to re-grab up throw rests and stuff because like stupid stuff like that i just miss in like tournament sets and i just can't do that anymore so i'm trying to combine like playing a ton so i try and play like at least like you know five or ten ranks that like ranked games or just regular uh unranked games and then i all try and put in at least a little bit of uncle punch time every day and just kind of practice just random tech that i find and stuff because i think one of the issues i have is that i was playing falcon i was kind of spoiled by a lot of like the cookbooks and stuff like that they have whereas puffs information's uh kind of just lol just back air so you kind of have to dig a little bit to find the info yeah so in terms of actually like the puff discord does have a puff bible i will say it's not as extensive as the cookbook is i've heard many good things about the cookbook because I think, uh, if you've never seen the Puff Bible, it's like, it kind of is very abstract in the way that it, um, addresses melee. It doesn't really kind of teach you fundamentally how Puff works as a character in the same way I think that the Falcon, the Falcon Cookbook probably does. Yeah, uh, I think that was, yeah, I've, I've looked at the, the, I actually went through the Bible a couple times. It's how I, like, a couple little things that I wasn't super familiar with, I found. But I agree, because there's a lot of stuff like the the puff triangle thing for, like, the uh, like the distances and stuff. And yeah. some of the, uh, like, if you're on platform in the middle where you can, like, double jump to the things or whatever. I, I get a lot, a lot of the theory and stuff like that, but a lot of it just kind of is like, okay, cool. And then I just kind of move on. So I think that's part of the issue I have with it, whereas... You know, there are, like, clips here and there on, like, how it works for certain things, you know, but a lot of it's just, like, you know, how to do little tech things here and there. Yeah, because, like, realistically, how, um, like, Hungrybox plays the game, like, he doesn't really do any of the stuff that's in that uh, Bible, but, like, yeah. he does, like, things that are similar or intuitive to him, so it's, like, I... Yeah, I understand the kind of, like, just backer type of mindset that sometimes people just say for some reason, because they're just like, well, it's easier than going through theory or trying to find a middle ground. But, like, yeah, no, I definitely understand the problem yep. there. I do like the fact that you're doing, like, uh, Uncle Punch for, like, what you call, like, basic or, like, dumb shit. Because, uh, like, that's, like, how Puff works. As long as you, like, get, like, that down, then, like, you can just focus on actually, like, doing game plans and stuff, which is, like, the harder part. Uh, of melee in general and puff yeah. just kind of gets to skip uh i don't want to say skip but it gets to like go to the game plan stuff like a lot sooner than like most other characters but mm -hmm. um what i would say is like before i even like go into the games radar i would just recommend that, like doing more uh like solo practice rather than uh, ranked just generally because like okay. uh the biggest thing i always strive for is like i whenever i'm playing i'm like i want to go go through my slippy replays Big out like three random games. And I have if I have lower than like eighty percent L cancels in one of the games, like I need to just like actually go back and just like grind L canceling for like an hour. Uh and like that's basically like the minimum I would strive for is like eighty. And like this one, like this replay is just random that was like fifty nine, so 
that's like Ooh. pretty big but also like sometimes like edge canceling will be not counted as l canceling so you kind of have to take it a grain of salt but you can usually tell when it's like you're missing l cancels rather than like the replay saying like you have like 60 percent uh but yeah i think that's pretty important as like a baseline but um uh, also, do you have any like random like general questions before I like look at the games? Uh, no, not really. I think I think just we'll probably get to a lot of the stuff. I think that in general, I think one of the the key concepts that I I feel like I sort of understand is uh, but I, I'm not really sure like how to implement it. It's like everything I read is always about like getting the knockdown and then using like I I just feel like there's a lot of situations where people are like oh you this the like drill knocks down at x percent and this knocks down at x percent i feel like i'm just like never in a situation where like okay they're i, I have met the percent where this knocks down and then i pound them and then they're like halfway across the stage and i'm like okay where am i supposed to go from here granted i don't know if that's just like you know a, a fundamental misunderstanding of how it is but there's a lot of stuff i felt like in the bible and a lot of the stuff for like this combos here when you get to knock down percent and then i like there's like nothing there at least that i saw that shows like why that is relevant and why the knockdown is so important i know like once they're knocked down you can you know jab rest or something along those lines but i think it's just that's kind of stuff that i'm looking at that i'm like because with like falcon and stuff you knock down so you know lead to you know extending the combos and stuff like that whereas puff i feel like other than like drill into knockdown you know rest or something like that i'm kind of floundering a little bit on seeing like why it's super important to aerial and then into pound because i know I've, i was watching some of the older like uh tutorials and stuff that other puffs were giving people and a lot of it was like just you know aerial and, to, and then try and pound more to get knockdowns and then there was no other explanation besides just get a knockdown and then that's it <laughs> so yeah so i mean it depends like it varies based on matchup like i'm not going to talk about like oh in the peach matchup you should be looking for a knockdown because <laughs> like usually you, you can't really well not it's not necessarily that it's like Let's say back air is like your main move to knock down Peach because up tilt uh, doesn't really knock her down. She has to hold down to actually get knocked down. And like pound doesn't really knock her down on the ground either. She's just too floaty. So like in that matchup, like that's not even a relevant thing. But let's say against Fox, like the thing that people talk about like back air into pound is because uh, pound knocks down at 4%. And the thing about knockdowns in the game is that Puff has a really hard time of winning neutral so when she wins neutral you want to get the most out of it which is a knockdown and that's like kind of why people just like say like oh yeah just back here once and then pound if you watch any hungry box set like literally against any fox who will just just go for one backer at the beginning of the game and instantly pound if they're like he won't do it necessarily against like ibw but he will do it literally against your favorite fox <laughs> it's just like <laughs> basically he's like trying to skip having to play uh, as most amount of neutral as possible because once mm -hmm. he gets even if he doesn't get like a uh, missed tech off the pound he can at least like put them into the corner if they roll away right or let's say they roll in then he can rest or let's say they like tech in place so he can maybe hard read that with a rest or he can try and grab uh, and then once he gets a grab he can up the rest like basically a lot of how puff works is trying to how do I say it? you want to like basically win neutral as less as possible to gain like the most reward or some matchups are you want to basically don't want to interact as much as possible because a knockdown isn't really going to lead to the same thing it does versus fox uh just based on combo weight like peach uh samus it's not like you're fishing for knockdowns in those matchups just because your moves do not really send them in like a, a knockdown state so that's mm -hmm. like why people like talk about it over and over again it's like in order to win with Jigglypuff against like most of the top tiers, you have to win neutral less and less and get more and more off of it, if that makes that sense. Makes, yeah, it definitely does. Because I think that's that's also one of the things I've heard, like working on like uh, why I switched to practicing so much more solo. Because like I was playing a, the tournament set, I, I get the first grab, I up throw, and then I rest and they survive. And I'm like, I'm supposed to do the up throw. And then I try it in the next one where I get a grab and then I miss it. And I'm like, well, I could have just essentially just given myself one free stock in the first one second. Like, I can't screw that up. And that, to me, that's like that. I used to not care so much about that, but I think that's why it's super important now. Yeah. And no, the personification of that as like a, a player is like CPU zero. Like I, I talked to him and he was like, yeah, I like learned punish game before neutral. And honestly, I would, I would recommend doing that. Uh, at any point in melee like that's why i talk about solo practice so much because it's just like the fact that you can just like 
basically punish and kill off of any type of neutral opening and like a against a top tier uh like fox marth falcon uh it's just super important with puff because the game plan stuff again is the hardest things whereas like getting like a tech chase rest or um just like a knockdown into like a job reset or a roll read or something is just like pretty easy if you just like practice it out over and over again mm -hmm. but That's what I was talking about. <laughs> Miss L cancels to start the match. Uh, yeah. Do you do you have like uh, a reason why you go for like this type of like opener? I'm just curious on your thought process. Mm, not particularly. So I I think this one of the things I think I'm struggling with the most right now, and I think I'm taking the uh, do more stuff to get into like. Uh, to get stuff down and like uncle punch and stuff is that like as soon as the games start like i forget most of the stuff that i'm like practicing and what i'm going for um in terms of why i started with a drill i honestly couldn't tell you <laughs> yeah in terms of like the forgetting usually what i do is i have like uh nowadays i have like a like a note of um like pretty much every matchup and i'm just like i look at it beforehand and i have like three things that i'm like actively working on like, when I do analysis, I don't know how much analysis you do uh, for Puff yet, but when I do analysis, I'm, like, John got a bunch of things, but usually, like, I'm not doing any of that thi those things yet. It's more about, like, kind of keeping them in, like, the subconscious of my mind, so it's, like, too much to focus on. But then I consciously focus on, like, three things whenever I'm playing, like, Falcon, mm -hmm. for instance, and I think that's pretty helpful. I just put it on my other monitor so I don't forget. And then if I feel like I'm just, like, autopiloting, I just, like, check it, like, in between the mm. next game, just to make sure I'm just, like, following the right path to succeed, essentially. But, um, yeah, I don't really think this is, like, the best opener. Most of the times, with this applies to every puff matchup. Basically, what I think is you either want to go onto the ground uh, without doing this type of, like, laggy aerial, like, drill. Even if you all cancel this, the Falcon should just run off up air and just hit you for it uh, for free. But, um... Basically, you could just like do a shield drop, wave land, and just get the ground and try and control center. That's one thought process. Another one is be really aggressive off the opener and try and like jump back here. Let's say Fox is shooting lasers on the side platform or Falco or something, or Sheik is like charging needles. Uh, that would like cover them doing that. But let's say they try and run center, then you kind of lose because you can just get hit for doing this type of situation. So, like, that's basically like the two main ways to play Puff. Uh, as an opener the third is like really bad and i don't like when people do it but a lot of people do uh do it as well they like jump backwards or like wave dash back or sit on the platform as their opener and play really passive and uh basically when you're camping with puff or like playing passive you basically eliminate most of the situations you can get knockdowns because most of the time when you're jumping away and going for back airs even if you like hit a backer on someone and like they they uh, jump into it or something they will get knocked down maybe uh at like 35 percent of their fox they just get knocked down they fall here they tech away or even tech in place and there's nothing that happens to them and you have to win neutral again doing that over and over again until they're like 150 and they die off the side uh so like uh whenever i uh like talk about puff or like try and like coach i never really suggest like really passive plays because it just doesn't really lead into puff strengths most of the time but again there's still some situations where passive is really good but yeah i don't really like doing that type of opener if you are again just do like an empty land or uh sometimes you can do a space backer to land that too but i just don't do like doing that backer so most of the time uh we were talking about the back air and pound stuff at like low percent when uh in pretty much every matchup you want to build damage this one's especially you want to build damage and you're looking for your knockdown percents so you can get some things started um so at zero the only thing that knocks down for puff is grab so you either want to try and get a grab or you want to build damage so that you can get other knockdowns is essentially how most matchups work so against falcon it's like 20s uh, it's like 27, I think it's like upper knockdown or it's pretty close to that and uh, Like you can build for that percent or you can be like, oh I want to back air so they can shield and then I can grab them for shielding later is another way to think about it, too So it's like a lot of puff comes down to 
oh, I'm going to throw out attacks so that they do this, and then I can do that, and then I can beat them for doing that. So, like, I back air a bunch, they either run into it, if they run into it over and over again, just keep back airing. That's fine, and then you can build up damage that way. But if they don't keep running into it and they shield, then next time you go for a grab. But next time they could still just run into it and try and, like, let's say it's Fox, they were out of Bump Smash or something. So then you would not go for the grab that time. So it's like a bunch of puff comes down to how kind of, I want to say strong her back air is, but basically how, like, good it is at building damage kind of safely compared to most characters. Uh, like a a prime example, I guess, is like Mars forward air is like kind of similar to Puff's back air, but even then it doesn't really function the same way because he just does not have Puff's aerial drift, so he inherently risks more when he uh, is throwing out forward air. So like, mm -hmm. that's like kind of how the low percent works, or uh, in most situations with Puff, you're either trying to condition them into an option that you want, either shield, uh, let's say it could be roll two, it could be jump, let's say they're at like... Uh, Fox gets knocked down by up air at 17%, you want them to jump, so then you're doing like an empty land in front of them, uh, and they're shielding, and then you're like, I'm going to catch the jump out of shield with an up air, and then you hit him for that. Uh, so basically a lot of it is like conditioning them to do X, Y, or Z at low percent. Because at like low percent, you, <laughs> you cannot get that much. Because like even when you get to like, let's say 4% against Fox, where Pound knocks down, you're, uh, they know that they are going to get knocked down by, by pound. Like, so they're going to play around it. So then you have to know that they are playing around the pound. So then let's say their answer to pound is like dashing back. Then you take space instead of going for the pound and have them cornered. Uh, which is another big thing with puff. Most times when you play puff, you either are looking for a knockdown or if you cannot get a knockdown directly, you want to corner them. So they have to make basically, I'll call it a panic option. Panic is a little bit too high stress word for it, but basically most characters do not like playing in the corner because if they're in the corner, they can get thrown off stage and potentially die. Or they can get like red out of the corner and die. So they don't really like playing in the corner. Only like Samus can really play in the corner. Samus Falco are like characters that can just like chill there for a while and not like be too upset. But um, basically in a lot of situations with Puff, you're either putting them in the corner or putting them in a knockdown or basically when you're in when they're in the corner you're trying to put them in a knockdown either through like catching their jump uh reading their roll uh resting that um trying to wade dash back out of a short hop nair from fox uh so that's like another thing about puff you're trying to basically put them in the corner so you can threaten a bunch of your scary options against them and put them into knockdowns that way as well so like Puff is pretty hard to like do these kind of like in place options too much. Uh, a lot of how this goes though is that you can't really like throw out a bunch of things in place. Like Puff isn't like chic or something like that where he can, or like Puff can just throw out like forward tilt, forward tilt or something in place and not really like get that too hard punish because she's just too slow and her uh, tilts especially just aren't that good. Uh, like even this actually just like doesn't it didn't even hit the the knee which was crazy so uh, it just is kind of like I don't want to say a nothing gameplay but um, it's not really trying to like threaten a knockdown or like keep them cornered or um, or like threaten like a back air so you can grab their shield or something like that later I do like I feel like you actually have a good concept of very a lot of headstone which is good like this was this is a really good nair I like the shield after the miss grab. Sometimes you can also, it depends on the matchup. When you miss grab, you can just hold down. And if, let's say, Fox goes for an air against you, you're just crouching or you're getting ASDI down uh, and not a true crouch. And then you can just grab again. Uh, it's pretty stupid. Most of the times, though, I would definitely recommend going for crouch. But against Captain Falcon, specifically, you can crouch and then reaction power shield if he goes for a stomp. Uh, it's pretty good in this matchup overall. It's just holding crouch and then shielding whenever he jumps at you or whenever he clicks stomp. It's pretty good. But you can't do that versus like and most of the cast. So it's Falcon specific, but I do like the, the idea of shield anyways. Uh, missed another L cancel, but um, 
I, the, the big thing here is I feel like it didn't act out a shield soon enough here. I think you could have gotten this uh, forward air if you reacting uh, soon enough. It felt like you kind of put yourself in the shield and weren't really like thinking about what was going to happen after besides the fact that you like need to get safe if that makes sense. Yeah, no, but, definitely. Like you weren't primed to like try and like hit him for hitting you here. I think this up tilt's like fine. Usually I do like up smash in this type of spot. Uh, it's just bigger of a move and it just feels better in my head most of the times I go for it. Um, and I can do it out of shield, so I kind of like up smash more than up tilt most of the times, but uh, this was fine. Uh, you yeah, could, I think I, yeah. I was just going to say, I think I go for up tilt a lot because I played Puff ages ago and that was like the era of like up tilt to rest being like the cool thing so i think it's still like some old old tech yeah. that's still in my head so i think i guess why i go for it a lot because when i used to play with my friends i used to be able to just up tilt rest everybody and it worked on you know every single time so were you going for up tilt rest here and then you got down air or are you going <laughs> yeah. for down air intentionally <laughs> i think it was down air intentionally but I, I, th I think also that's one thing is too is there's a lot of rest opportunities that i just choke on so uh, but yeah, I wouldn't necessarily go for down air intentionally here. This is the vein of like, uh, you got your knockdown, so you need to get like the most off of it. And obviously, uh, rest is stronger than a uh, down air here. So mm. I'll just go for rest off the tech. It's weird because you also have to know when up tilt knocks down because this situation actually happened to me yesterday in tournament. I wasn't paying attention to what percent Fox is at. And uh, I went for up tilt and they got a uh, tech in place and I went for rest, uh, jump rest instead of just a raw rest and uh, it didn't hit because I wasn't thinking about percents too hard. But um, yeah, in this situation you would just click down B after you get the up tilt expecting a uh, tech in place or miss rest. You could also like kind of react to them missing tech or teching in place, but it's pretty hard, honestly. I usually kind of read in these types of situations. Mm. Um... I'm ignoring the rest for right now, but do you know why you did um, dash tech here? Uh, I think it was probably just to to get away from the uh, getting off, getting away from the uh, ledge. Because I, I was just assuming, I think here that he was gonna uh, knee out a shield, so I was like just trying to dash attack him. One thing you can do here instead, if you are scared about being near ledge, you can. Puff has the liberty of jumping off stage anytime that a character is close to her uh, when um, Puff is cornered. That's like a big thing about Puff in general. Also, you can do wave dash cross up here if you expect them to um, try and jump out of shield to hit you. Uh, it's depending on character. Um, I would do it against Fox. I would do this specifically against Fox. I would do wave dash cross up. Fox would drill in place. I would turn around and grab. Sheik, sometimes that would also happen as well. But um, yeah, Puff is really good in the corner. Uh, and it's not in the same way Samus or Falco was like talking about earlier, but basically she can just use off stage as like kind of a platform in a way where um, she can kind of float out there, not using that many resources and just grab ledge uh, at a later point and just get her invincibility back and then turn and win her and get back into the spot and then just take her time and then getting back into like kind of a neutral situation. Cause obviously you don't really like this position too much uh it's funny because after the drill he went for a shield which is actually really really good for you because he didn't try and do like anything uh else he could have tried to grab after your drill and actually would have worked because he didn't crouch so um this is just like a low percent drill thing this applies to every character when you hit like any character with drill and they're below like most characters they don't really are in true hit stun forever until like 60 where they have to like actually pick like shield spot dodge or roll because if they do not pick those options around 60 they do not have frame advantage to do anything else like fox is like fox can't like shine realistically in those percents he kind of can but um it's just pretty scary for him because if he's late on the shine uh, then he can just get grabbed so like most characters around those percents they have to do this one like shield spot dodge or roll but because he's at such a low percent he can go for like a grab or something and then in these type of situations you can hard read what they do out of a drill hit stun at low percent and kill him for it i do this all the time i do drill and i do crouch and let's say they're playing chic and uh 
their response out of getting downered at low percent, they go for down smash. But they don't know that they do not have enough time to actually go for it. And you crouch and then you just either jump rest, wave dash rest, uh, dash, uh, crouch, dash up rest, uh, and just kill them for it. And against Falcon, they like to grab out of hit stun of the downer uh, or shield, uh, either one. Uh, most Falcons, I guess, nowadays, I think grab. I was surprised by shield, honestly. So what you could have done was drill, crouch, and he misses grab, and you just jump and wrist. This type of stuff is pretty new, I would say. I don't. There's not that many people like Hungry Box isn't experimenting with this option too much. The only times that he uh, really goes for low percent drill into like a hard read option is he plays Marth. If you ever seen him play Marth, he just like goes for down at low percent and hard reads roll away and they always give it to him for some reason it's pretty crazy honestly like mars has a billion options at low percent response down air but they always choose to roll against hungry box and he just pops <laughs> off like crazy but um yeah that's that's another situation that happens so i do actually like drill at low percent because um it puts them in the hit zone they have to choose an option and if they aren't ready enough they will just get owned it's like kind of a chump check slash uh, knowledge test but the fact that the knowledge isn't really around too much it's not like it's like a different example would be like luigi like grab like the di to get to not get like a uh, combo from his throws like that's like people know about that but if they aren't really familiar with luigi they might not understand it but it's like it's so prevalent that like most people know nowadays but not a lot of people know about this drill stuff so it's pretty cool to experiment uh with uh, so you definitely, uh, I watched a little bit of the game, I <laughs> just to make sure. Um, you definitely just rest out of every falcon down through. Do you, do you just do you just see someone do that and just like that's what you just do or? Oh yeah, it was a um, it was probably it's one of the things where I was like watching something, and he was misspacing them at one point when we when we uh, when we were playing. So I was like, oh, I should be able to get him with it because he's he kept like you know kneeing when he was like more or less inside my character model yeah. and i was just i was able to to rest him uh once or twice in like a, a different game and i was like okay so let's let's try that again or whatever and i then i think i i got like you know hard stuck on the idea yeah so a big thing about puff is risk reward so let me go back to this so when you get grabbed here you're at six percent so the only thing that can happen to you that is terrible here actually there's nothing that can happen that's terrible to you because you do a really good di so let's say you di out completely you could maybe get nipple spiked and maybe die at six percent like that's like uh, such a worst case scenario that like it almost is impossible so the risk reward of going for this rest and it hitting versus missing is not really in your favor because the worst thing that can happen to you is not death and the best thing that can happen to you is you trade maybe but also falcons at 30 percent and you're gonna hit him on the left side so he's not he's gonna be face he's gonna be uh, knocked this way because that's just how puff works when you are on the left side of the character they will get knocked uh to the right if you're on the right side they'll get knocked to the left of the rest so Best case scenario, maybe uh, he DIs down and dies at 30, but and then you trade stocks anyways. So that's like a big thing about Puff. You always want to basically the max reward is usually a kill, and the min reward should not be you dying. Uh, at least if you are dying, you need to be at a kill percent. What I mean by that is like you need to be at like 60% versus Fox on Pokemon Stadium. And you are going for a rest on Fox's up smash out of shield, and you miss it, and you die. But let's say Fox at 30%, Fox would have died if you hit it. So that's like a fine risk reward option. But like this isn't like a fine risk reward option because like you could not die from this. And I mean, you you can die from this or you will die from this. And, yeah, uh, I think I remember being pretty Falcon upset about going die. for this one. <laughs> yeah, it's like Falcon probably won't die. You you will die, and it probably will not work in your favor. And the possibility of you dying from not going for it was so low that like it doesn't work. So that's like an overarching theme. Like I don't know why the puff file doesn't explicitly say risk reward anywhere on it, 
I don't think it even says the, any of those words. Um, but that's, like, kind of Puff in a nutshell, besides, like, cornering them and then, like, trying to get a knockdown is, like, the the my theory, or and basically the Hungry Box theory as well, too. It's just risk reward over and over again. Uh, whenever you're trying to be getting those knockdowns, you want to be like, oh, if I go for this upper read, can I die for it? And if I go for the upper read, do I kill him? Or let's say Fox is at 16%. And uh, I'm at 60%. I go for an up air read. Fox does not jump out of the corner into the up air. And then he just runs up and up smashes me and I die. I couldn't have even killed him if he, if he jumped because he'd be at 16% and the knockdown 17. And the only way I could kill him is with an extended sequence of like, I have to read his double jump or something. And realistically, it's hard to do an extended sequence with Puff because she's so slow. So most of your sequences are like one hit, bam, rest, or one hit, tech chase, uh, edge guard, rest, or something like that. So that's like a big thing about Puff, is just risk reward. Because like the down throw, like uh, resting out of the down throw is actually not terrible. I've always kind of thought it was kind of cheesy sometimes because like uh, not a lot of good Falcons get hit by it. But like sometimes you see Wizrobe actually get hit by it from Hungrybox, and he's like the best player in the world off of like comboing Jigglypuff. So I'm like... You know what? It's fine. And then I also was watching uh, Khalid versus S2J, S2J at um, Gommel this uh, last weekend. And uh, Khalid basically won the set because he rested uh, Johnny's down throw. Uh, nah. And he got like a stock off of it. And it was a, He didn't die either. So that was like a big risk reward thing. I was like, dang, that's pretty nice. But um, yeah, against bad Falcons, it kind of works uh, for sure. And the risk reward basically goes up. That's also a thing, like, if you know that the player is bad at a certain thing, then going for the option to beat that thing basically increases your reward every time because the risk is lower because you're going to not guess wrong uh, and lose a mis mix up and uh, be able to actually punish them over and over again. So. OK, so what are you thinking like right now when you're doing this? So yeah, so a lot of the like my game plan at this point is just to try and keep him out by keeping myself like trying to only hit him with like the disjoint and trying to keep him from being able to kind of get in on me too much. So I'm just trying to like out pressure his you know, his nares in place and stuff like that. Okay, so the problem with this is that let's most of the time with puff you want to like kind of be falling when you hit someone so you have the most amount of space when you do this type of rising back air you're only going to hit them if they jump uh most of the time sometimes against captain falcon you can hit him standing still uh with this rising back air uh off of full hop but most of the times you won't so you're kind of like doing like uh how do i say it? like a too safe of a back air that there's no like inherent uh, risk of like maybe getting hit like the worst thing that can happen here is Falcon runs out of the corner and he kind of takes center again but he can't realistically hit you that easily like if he tries to jump you could like maybe falling up there uh, and just like hit him for jumping so like he's not like gaining that much when you do these types of aerials but uh, the problem with full hopping is that it lets them come out of the corner because if you short hop instead and go for like a back here in place they can't really dash out of the corner is the big thing uh so most characters are looking for you to full hop when they uh when they are cornered so they could dash out fox is the big example marth is another example falcon does it too um sometimes against slow characters this type of gameplay is fine like if i'm playing samus i'm not really like too concerned about them getting out of the corner because they will stay in the corner like that's where they live so i'm not like uh like too concerned about playing like this kind of passive type of aerial because they can't just run out of the corner they can like dash two centimeters and try and dash tag you and you will just be in the air still so like i'm not like worried necessarily doing this against like a slow character but against falcon marth fox and sometimes even falco i'm not really like trying to do this type of like movement i'm more so just like trying to short hop and then try and back air and then or i'm trying to do a jump raid with like a full hop up air uh, or I'm trying to wave dash back and just like take and just keep center controlled or like read a roll with the wave dash back or like read like a short on there like I was saying earlier like um, you kind of like 
want to just guess an option what they're doing and trying to kill them uh, is most of how the corner play goes. Because uh, if you guess right, they die. And most of the times when you guess wrong, you are not dead because you're at 0%. And uh, then it changes. Like, let's say if this is um, you are at 63% three stocks and Falk is at 63% uh, four stocks. Then it gets weird because, like, you kind of don't want to, like, com continuously pressure the corner, like, on the ground or something. Uh, and, like, kind of risk your stock. So you can play more passive like this. But um, there's really no, like, inherent, like, oh, I'm going to die if I mess up going for a hard read here. So I'd probably do that instead of, like, this type of movement. Because, like, you see how you went into the air and you gave up all this space by, like, drifting all the way back here? Another <laughs> thing is, like... Basically with Puff, you want to land as close as possible to your opponent uh, most of the time. Uh, there's very few instances I'm like, I need to drift all the way back. Uh, uh, the one example is like, I'm playing like Peach or something, then like, I can just drift back and just continuously camp if I have the lead or something. But uh, when I'm playing someone and I want to keep them cornered, I have to land here. Uh, or even ideally here, especially since I saw him miss an aerial, so I have more time to land. Uh, so that's a big thing also is like kind of reacting to what your opponent is doing and being able to be like oh he's like dashing back that means i can take space on him or oh he's jumping that means he can't hit me right now so i can kind of land closer to him that's just like a big thing that puff do is just trying to be as close as close as you can without risking your stock and again because you're a zero you can't risk your stock here but i will say that th like this is like again like passive or whatever but um this right here is like kind of classic uh jigglypuff where you kind of like put yourself into the air at the first aerial so you're like what else do i do besides like throw out another back air when i fall down um the problem with this though this gets insanely predictable uh, if you only do like back air uh, or any aerial you do back air and then fall down with like another aerial right after i just call it fa aerial falling aerial uh, just because I just see it so much. Uh, basically, the big thing with this is that they can just dash dance if they're Fox, Falcon, Marth, and just wait for the second back air, and then just grab you off of it, and you just could potentially die or just always take percent off of it. So the way to mix this this up is you do empty land, so you just do not land with an aerial at all. Or let's say you can double jump back air, land on the side platform, then, or you can do wave land off the side platform, or let's say you can do back air, drift back off stage expecting them to like do like a really aggressive approach uh, expecting you to like kind of just fall down here so like there's a lot of ways to basically mix up your landings with puff and uh uh try not to do as like many like i almost i don't want to say they're autopilot all the time because sometimes they are good to do two backers in a row like this uh but most of the times they are on autopilot so i'll just be really conscious of like when you're landing am i like choosing like a mix up here or am i only doing like the same landing over and over again if that makes sense oh man if you grab ledge this was pretty good actually uh i don't like that second backer because uh you definitely should have been able to be like oh he's all the way down there like i mm -hmm. i don't have to do that second backer anymore um because also this doesn't cover anything you have to like if you're expecting nair here you actually kind of just want to sit outside of the nair range and then just hit him for nairing because he can't hit you anymore or if like knee or something as well yeah yeah i think i was trying to like catch a jump or something but... yeah if you wanted to catch a jump i would have been more aggressive with your drift and continuously drift and then just try mm -hmm. and like uh like some ways to think about edge guarding is pretending like it's a combo still and then just like going for your read and just continuously drifting and then just fall fall with the second back air expecting a jump uh, that's a good point but um against falcon in particular how i usually edge guard him is i'm like oh is he going to do one of like three options like aerial on a stage fall down uh or like basically try and snap the ledge uh, is like one of the three options so i'm like i'm just gonna pick one i want to cover right now and then if i am wrong i will just switch my option next time and if i'm right i'm just gonna continuously do it over and over again uh sometimes you can kind of cover like all three but it's i don't want to say too hard but i just don't think it's like for in my head i think about the risk reward of just being like one of three chance to get a stock every time cool that's that's what i like with puff i'm not thinking like a hundred percent chance to get the stock like maybe 20 percent of the time it's just like lower uh so it's up to i guess the individual but i usually just choose one out of three options against falcon 
but yeah, I would describe Blood Shearer. You definitely could have, but another thing I do, uh, this applies to every character. When they're the, below the ledge like this, you can just like go for drill and then just hit the edge of the drill, um, and it basically resets the edge guard. Uh, you probably have seen Hungry Box do it before against like Fox's mm. up B, but um, it's really good against Captain Falcon too. It's good against literally every character. Like it, it works against Mars up B too. It's not as effective, but um, still good. Uh, so I'd have just done a downer here if I wasn't confident and able to jump and grab the ledge here. Uh, but yeah, I don't like the forward smash because even if the forward smash hits, they can also tech it. And when they tech it, they get damage on you and they will recover basically every time because they'll just up B after the tech and then they'll hug you and most of the times with the tech uh with the uh, up b it's not that great for falcon to hug but if falcon hugs you like this then you can't really do anything because you'll be sent like into stage but let's say you're like dropping down and trying to hit them with a forwarder and they hug you with the up b then you can just wall tech if they if you get knocked down by it and they just hit them out of it and it's really really stupid <laughs> it's actually trivializes the edge guard a lot uh, against falcon if they literally cannot do a mix up like narrow on the stage or jump or double jump grab ledge they will just just continuously die uh if you just are down to sacrifice some percent yeah this is something that i i have changed since these clips was i thought forward air's hitbox went a, a lot lower so that's why i was using it a lot for edge guards but i think it was just a misplaced idea yeah, from okay. something else because that makes sense yeah i mean other characters forward smashes would hit lower here so that does make sense it's not as good for edge guarding, but I think that would have hit on like Battlefield or something, so it would have been the same thing. Dash attack also works the same way, or it maybe hits slightly lower than forward smash. I don't know the exact frame data. I think it does, uh, but I, again, I wouldn't use dash attack there. I would just try and reset with drill. Yeah. That was. It was kind of funny because you kind of did the aerial falling up again, uh, aerial falling aerial again. But against Falcon, you can kind of get away with this a lot because Puff's up air is kind of broken versus Falcon because most of the times you can just crouch after it and be kind of safe. But uh, against a good Falcon, another thing about like aerial falling aerial is because they will get hit by the first aerial or even the second aerial and then just crouch and then they'll just like gentleman out of it. Uh, if you've ever seen Nun Hungry Box, he would do that all the time against him. He kind of popularized it. But let's say this is Fox. He would just crouch, cancel this uh, up air, and just shine you out of this. And then he would get a knockdown himself and get like 20 damage probably. So it's kind of like, uh, again, a risk reward thing. Like when you hit this up air, the best thing that can happen is like you can get it up tilt maybe. And you actually did the up tilt, and I think you were pretty like fast on it too, and he still couldn't get it out because it just doesn't do enough hits on and doesn't send him into knockdown, so it didn't work out. And like he can't really do that much when you up tilt his shield, but he can at least get out of the situation, uh, if that makes sense. Let's say you hit him with an aerial before it knocks down. And this time, instead of going for the up tilt, you actually hard read that he's going to shield, and then you grab him. That's a that is a mix up that I go for a lot because um, it's kind of similar to like back airing, and then they shield because uh, they're conditioned to shield from the back air. It's um, basically they know that when you hit them with a weak aerial, you are going to try and like go for an attack after uh, they try and like continuously uh, keep up like frame advantage on them. But if you don't go for an attack and you just wait and then grab their shield, then they can't do anything about it. Uh, their only option is to hard read the fact that you're going to go for a grab and then go for like an attack of themselves. And then it loses to the up tilt again. <laughs> so it's actually kind of like, uh, it's kind of weird how puffs works. It's like circular in a lot of her mix ups where it's like it goes back and forth whether you should do an attack, no attack, grab, no grab, go for a hard read out of a jump uh, mix up or something like that. It's just like... And it's all leads to like, oh, I get a knocked out of it, and I can get a wrist, or I can get like a really big punish, um, or like an edge guard out of it, and then risk reward. It's like, I, was that another rest attempt, or did you go for down there again? No, that was definitely a rest attempt. That okay. one, it's just, yeah. Gotcha. I actually don't think that rest was too bad. Sometimes like you can just gonna go for random rests as buff. And I kind of see it literally every tournament uh, I watch of any puff. They will just go for rest that I haven't really thought about or seen. I'm like, huh, that made sense. They just like reacted to something random and you kind of just reacted to the fact they went for a random down smash there. You almost killed them off of it, which is pretty funny. Uh, so that was pretty good actually. 
Also, that was the second time you went for this, um... This, this time, this was actually more reasonable than the last one you did. The last one, he was, like, here when you went for this mm. back here. I like this one, but the fact that he already shown that he's not going to go for... The, he might have shown it in, the, in an earlier game, which is why you're doing it so much. But the fact that he's already not done it once this game in, uh, like, a worse spot, uh, that's scarier for him. I'd probably incline the fact that he's going to try and snipe ledge and just go for, like, a weak forward area or something like that. Um, big thing off the platforms, uh, well, you don't, and I'm not gonna talk about, like, oh, shield drop or not shield drop here, it doesn't really matter too much, but, um, you don't have to always shield drop into an aerial or waveland or, uh, uh, just drop through the platform into an aerial, you can just drop through and then just go for, like, a crouch is really good, and just react to what your opponent will do, I think that's pretty solid, because it's kind of similar to, like, what I was talking about with aerial falling aerial, they will kind of just wait out this back air and then just hit you for it over and over again. So whenever you do like just like a shield drop or a drop through fast fall crouch, then you can just power shield this and then you can just all smash out a shield probably or just try and shield grab it uh, or just back air to shield what they do after or like way dash turn around grab if they try and shield like a bunch of mix ups. But yeah, I definitely like uh mixing in uh, empty land i kind of do empty land more than uh attack nowadays honestly because a lot of people are ready for the shield drop aerials uh, or drop their aerials from puff yeah. when you're playing puff and you're dropping through platforms are you shield dropping like 100 percent of the time like is that generally where you want to get to i usually shield drop like nowadays like 99 percent of the time i don't really like drop through too much if i'm doing anything that's not shield dropping i'm wave landing most of the time uh one time the the times i do drop through is i'm already above the platform and i'm not i don't want to land on the platform so i just drop through after my aerial or like let's say fox does a short hop aerial underneath the platform usually it's the the cody up there um trying to hit me on the platform i jump up and then i just fall through the platform and just like hit him with a back air so i'm never really touching the mm -hmm. platform when i do most of my drop throughs uh sometimes you see hungry box you like wave dash wave dash wave dash uh fall through the platform up there and um, it's just like, it's just not uh, as clean or I don't, I don't wanna say slow cause it's not necessarily as like, it's not like what it is. It just feels worse uh, to me than uh, a shield drop. And I can't really explain that besides just it's an intuitive thing. Uh, mm. But yeah, it's, um, I definitely shield drop most of the time. I feel like Hungrybox has actually stopped using most of his drop through stuff and he uses shield drop more. Uh, I wouldn't say there's that many puffs that don't shield drop a lot. Okay. Instead of going for this, so this is this could have been another aerial falling aerial situation, but instead of going for this back air, um, he could have been like, oh, they're going to miss the tech here. I'm going to falling up air instead and try and rest them off of the up air. So that's like kind of a thing like I was talking about earlier. You kind of want to maximize what you get off of every opening. If you're expecting miss tech there, falling up air is like the best option. So you can try and like get them into a rest. Because, like, so let's say this character was Fox instead of Falcon, because Fox is Puff's hardest matchup, so it's like, I always go back and there. The Hungry Box is just wrong about the Zane stuff. But, um, yeah, if this was Fox and you went for that back air, they got knocked down, you'd want to falling up or that, because if you're expecting Miss Tech, because it would lead to rest, if you go for a back air, most of the times nowadays people will hold down and just go to ledge anyways, and it basically makes back air useless. Um, it gets. I want to say it gets worse and worse over the meta, but that's like kind of leads back in the earlier. It's like you don't want to play that much neutral, and when you just like go for like a falling back or like this, you're kind of inviting the fact that you want to play more neutral or play more mix ups, and you could just try and end as many mix ups as possible by just falling up or expecting miss tech. But let's say you were just like, oh, you reacted to miss tech, and you don't think you have enough time to go for a falling up or you could just like read what he does after the mistech. Like, let's say you're like, oh, I'm not sure if I get a falling up air in time. Uh, I can just read roll in and then you just fall and then just rest roll in. Or you're like, oh, okay, I think he's going to roll away. I can land and dash attack. Uh, or I can like try and like back air on the way down. And let's say he's not ready for the back air, then he can actually just get sent off stage and die more effectively than a back air here because uh, he has more of an ability to slide off uh, and grab ledge. And also it's just like a lot 
easier to recover when you're closer to the, the stage than further away when you're like a character like Falcon. With Puff, it's not really the same issue because she has a lot of jumps and bounce. Um, but yeah, that's like a big thing about like the knockdown or whatever. Uh, mm -hmm. It's just like maximizing what you get off of it. Because like, yeah, he was close enough to the stage to get her a mix up. Uh, and he potentially kills you there if that knee was strong. Which I'm surprised it honestly wasn't strong. Do you still do this like sing saw? No, no, it was a, uh, that was a um, thing that I was doing because I was doing it just like once, just as like a just try and catch people. And then my friend was like, "Oh, you always sing just once. Stop doing it just once." And I was like, "Okay, I'll just do it three different times." And then I realized the uh, uh, the, the invulnerability is definitely not oh, as long as the sing. So yeah, I've been terrible. trying to avoid doing that. <laughs> yeah, it's really bad. Um... Yeah, basically how I think about the ledge is like, you don't want to be too obvious, so you don't want to just like instantly uh, get off ledge and then do your aerial every time or do your like jump every time. So you want to mix up the amount of times you grab ledge uh, whenever you get off. Uh, I mean, every character kind of does the same thing. Like I'm sure when you're playing Falcon, you'd like hack stash a certain amount of times. And then you'd be like, oh, they're kind of reading me for hack stashing three times here. So I should do like four or five back stashes. It's the same thing with Puff. You're like, mm. oh, I should like, uh, refresh like two more times here before I get on stage or I should jump away and like bait something and then like let's see if they bite for the bait like let's say I jump away like I was talking about and they're like oh I'm gonna run up up smash from Fox then you just like hit them for up smash and you can either stay on ledge or you can just try and take stage doing that um, what's the uh, what's the safest like because I know like for like Mewtwo it's like up and away and you teleport back to the thing is Puff like it's is it down and away drifts so is like the safest to like for regrabbing the, the ledge I know like I think that's usually what Puffs do right like you just kind of fall back and then rejump to the ledge yeah most of the time uh, you're either doing like one or two refreshes you're either doing like forward air regrab is like the classic one uh, mm. it's like the old school one or you're just falling here and jumping back up yeah um, okay that's usually what hungry box does when he's ledge camping versus fox but old school hungry box when he's camping versus like Captain falcon versus wizard Robe, he would do forward air regrab and actually that's why we have a ledge grab moment it's because people people got really upset about him doing that versus hungry uh, versus wizard Robe. uh but yeah uh that's pretty good versus captain falcon but like the this one is not as good versus Captain Falcon just because he has an easier way to hit it with a stomp. But with this one, then he has a really hard time fitting with a stomp against it. Uh, and you have to like try and run off another air. Um, but yeah, that's like, or also you can do like a back air, uh, like a turnaround back air from ledge, and then just fall back and like kind of grab the ledge with your drift. That's another one as well. Um, yeah, those are the, the main ones. Sometimes you can just jump up and down, but that's just like vulnerable, like in a way that the other ones aren't. Uh, yeah. every, all of them are vulnerable, but they're not as vulnerable as just jumping up and down or singing up and down. Uh, you can also do like tournament winner and then just drift back to ledge too. That's another option. Uh, but yeah, uh, sing is obviously not one of them, as you've learned, which is good. Uh, so a big thing about found from ledge, pretty much every puff, including myself, goes for this when they're starting out and playing the character. So pound from ledge is cool because they're like, oh, if they get hit by the pound, they get sent off stage and maybe I can hit them with a back air and they die. So like risk reward brain, you're already like, oh, that's really good because like if I hit them, they can die. But risk reward the other way, the fact that they know you're going to pound from ledge basically means that there's a 10% chance that will work and 10% is not that great when every time you go for that pound you probably die like because most of the times when you're gonna hit off stage like this you're probably at like 90 percent so falcon reads that you're going to go for this pound he will just literally short on me at you and just hit you instead of doing this like literally random like upper i don't know what the hell this was honestly but yeah any real falcon would either just dash hands grab here expecting the pound or just short hop me and just kill you so yeah, it's a pretty big thing to just not spam. Uh, I would just recommend not doing it at all until, like, you know, give it a couple months. Just, like, stop doing it. Just tell yourself one pound like this per game, and then it'll eventually go away, basically. You'll be like, oh, oh man, I'm, I'm getting hit by this too much. 
Uh, so I'm gonna oh, that's that. my notes. <laughs> yeah, one, one pound per game. <laughs> yeah, one one pound for budget game, and then you're like, okay, it'll, you'll figure out why it just sucks. But once you get really good, it actually starts getting good again. It's just people forget about it, or they're not expecting you to be that bad, so it kind of works out. Or they like are putting themselves in bad spots because uh, they're not expecting the pound anymore. So you'll see Hungry Box get these pounds from ledge against like Fox players, but it's because they've been basically reconditioned in a different way uh, against different ledge options because this one is just so like egregiously bad uh, as like a, just like a raw thing to do uh, because the whole thing about puff on the ledge or in the corner in general is that you want to take your time to reset neutral or stay in the ledge and stay on the ledge or corner and just keep camping uh, again I'm not like trying to t tell you to camp it's just like something that will happen um <laughs> But yeah, so like, Puff wants to take her time to get out of the situation, get back to real neutral, and not be like, quote unquote, disadvantaged. This isn't a real disadvantage, but it's not a winning situation for Jigglypuff uh, when she doesn't have the lead like this. And there's a ledge grab moment in place. So you don't want to do something that is going to basically secure the fact that you are not taking your time, and then you're also losing neutral immediately, and it's already over. Uh, so instead I would be like against Falcon in particular I'd be like oh tournament winner and I'm just like jumping out here waiting for Falcon to try and bite and jump up at me and I'd hit him away for that or I'd just like sneak under sneak under him and try and hit him and like back him off stage for an overextension so that's one thing in the corner you're trying to look for overextensions let's say Fox runs up and up smashes the ledge and then you were just ledge stalling with a forward air then you can just hit them for it or you can just literally just jump on stage and try and get center um or like let's say like a character like dash it back to try and like continuously hold center and then you just like oh i'm getting off ledge and just like chilling here or jumping to the platform because you just realize there's more space now so like you're either like looking for a character to lose their space uh just based on their movement and where they place themselves that's one thing you're looking for you're looking for over extensions and then you're looking for basically just inch 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 your way out of the corner with your back air spacing uh just playing it really safe and not taking like any extensive risks because when you hit someone in the corner unless it's pound uh or like up air you can't really get anything off of it so the risk reward is terrible in a uh, puff's favor when she's just going for back airs here so you don't really want to fight out of the corner the back air and stuff like that is more just spacing to get into a better spot like center stage or onto the platform and trying to like get down and just play neutral again so, like this pound it just like invalidates all those theory options at all i assume that was my stash tech it's crazy that one was actually fine risk award i like that one because if you if you miss you're dead anyways uh if you get hit by it you're dead no matter what they do so i'm fine so it's like if and then if you hits they die so this was perfect risk reward option for it yeah it's, it's funny i actually got a phantom rest at my local the day before <laughs> <laughs> that's horrible yeah no, it's actually crazy like the other two times you do for the uh, the rest of the down there. I don't really like the risk board, but that time was literally the perfect time, too. I've been getting so many fans lately, too. It's insane. Okay. Uh, basically, how Nair works is just the whole thing with Puff. Is that you either want to Nair, uh, and Nair puts them in, uh, like, Sakura angle at low percents, which just means that they're in, like, kind of a fixed knockdown, like Shine. So, it basically makes your combos a lot easier to hit like nair into grab or nair into rest or nair into up tilt so like those are the percents you want to be using rest at i mean nair, nair at but again okay. like i was talking about earlier about predictability they'll know you want to nair when they're at low percent so they won't let you get it uh or they are going to get better defense against it like oh they're going to know they're going to nair so i shouldn't do like a shine or something because if they try and shine out of the nair usually they will not be able to get the shine out because they'll get pushed kind of away like a shine so they'll misspace their shine and get grabbed so like basically those are percents i like using there um i like using there sometimes at high percents versus some characters but falcon is not really one of them because when i hit him with this snare doesn't really set up for anything because i'm still in the animation of nair here so i wasn't able to go for a nair into an immediate forward air 
Uh, like, if this is Captain Falcon's Nair or something like that, then you'd be able to Nair and then just uh, falling up right here. And you wouldn't have to, like, worry about the fact that you're in the mood for, like, 2 billion years and you can't just, like, get something out with your speed. But Puff just doesn't have the same liberty as, like, some characters because her Nair is just so long. But, I mean, that's why it's kind of good. Um, but a high percentage, I'd rather use Drill over Nair because Drill... Um, it's not a knockdown, but they get put in hit stun forever, uh, basically. So you can just spam drill into drill at really high percents. Not like I was talking about earlier, but the low and mid percents, where they can have options. They don't have options. At 97% is Captain Falcon, you cannot do anything besides try an SDI out, but you can follow their SDI with your drift on reaction. And um, you can just spam drill against it, where you can just go for drill rest, drill up smash. Drill grab, drill forward smash, all those options usually end the stock if you pick the right one. And there's pretty much like, it's just like kind of feeling it out which one will work most of the time. Some people switch up, you know, based on vibes, which one they'll do at a certain point in time. But um, yeah, so Nair doesn't really like lead to like a, a meaningful hit. Uh, it leads to a knockdown, but you can't get the, anything off the knockdown if that mm. makes sense. Yeah. Uh, not that type of drill, it'd have to be... Basically, most of the drills are, um, like, crossing up a shield. So you hit, like, their foot or something, or their tail, is, uh, most of the times I use drill. And I usually use a short hop drill from the ground. Like, I'm next to Fox, and he's shielding. Uh, instead of going for a grab, which, like, is, again, going for a grab against a character like Fox is pretty scary, because they can shine on a shield. Not on reaction, but on read, the fact that you're going to land and grab. Um, which is why back air and stuff is really good because it mixes up the fact that you're going to go for grab and makes it harder for Fox to hard read that. Um, but and instead of doing for like an empty land and trying to get red, you can go for a down air cross up, which has an active hitbox. So you're kind of safe the entire time you're going for the down air. Uh, and it'll just hit it. You'll basically end the down air at the shield poke at like their tail of their Fox or their toe or something mm. of their cheek. Or Falcon. This was weird. I don't know what happened here. See, so we dash back, which is good. And then you like jump into the air and just like kind of fall at him. Do you know what you're trying to do here? Uh, I think I, I was having some uh, input issues. I uh, literally just broke my fob, so I'm like getting uh, used to an OEM again. So it was like, a, <laughs> there's a little bit of that. There's also a little bit of just in. I just being nervous, I guess. I definitely flub a little bit and stuff like this. Yeah, what I've actually liked here, you could have done um, wave dash back forward smash instead of doing this like jump. Uh, I don't know what the intent. I don't know like we'll never know what the actual intention or what would have happened <laughs> for this jump. But um, wave dash back forward smash just in general pretty good. I was talking about wave dash back like trying to like expect like a nair or something out of the corner. Uh, but I just like wave dash back forward smash in a lot of matchups. Uh, it basically just catches movement really well. I would have probably caught this. Uh, whatever he tried to do here, probably would have lost the forward smash. I think he would have you would have done wave dash back, and he would have still done his dash back and tried to nair, and you would just trade with the forward smash. Uh, trade nair at forward smash and just kill him. And that would be good to risk reward, because 12%. You can't die off anything he goes out, uh, throws out. Even if he grabs you, you should not die at 12% from a Captain Falcon grab in center stage. Uh, if you do, that's unfortunate. Uh, but, um, yeah, no, that would have been pretty kind of scored. Against, like, Fox or something, I wouldn't really necessarily go for that. I'd rather go for, like, a cross-up drill, a grab or something, throw him off stage, because um, I'm more scared of... Kind of how I think about Fox Puff sometimes is, like, I have, a, like, a life, like, like, a life force, and anytime I get hit, like, it's basically a third of my life force just gone. <laughs> Uh, or like my health bar so it's like pretty bad to just like risk reward sometimes and just like click forward smash but against like falcon chic uh even sometimes against marth i'm fine clicking this button uh sometimes you just do it eyes closed and just kind of doing it mix up but that would have been fine here again you kind of like down air too high in the air uh and uh you don't really want to down air when they're jumping because that's really bad uh you can kind of get get to the ground out of it and still be fine but um you won't get any like advantage out of it so it's just kind of like a falling to the ground situation whereas if you waited a bit out of that down air and did it closer to the ground you could have maybe gotten a grab or an up smash or a roll again and killed them off of it you actually do the wave dash back but you do a back air 
that's a pretty common habit that a lot of people do sometimes i do it myself I always look to go for like a wave dash bag and do a grab up smash or back air i'm not not grab up smash or forward smash not back air uh those okay are the, those are the main things you want to do out of wave dash back or react to their neutral and then let's say you go for a back air because they're dashing in that's not the same thing as going for wave dash into immediate back air and not reacting to anything um so that risk reward still fine kind of you can't die but um it's less so because you have ways to kill them at 106 that aren't rest uh mm -hmm. drill you can hit them off stage once with the back air and you should be able to kill them on yoshi story he should not be able to have enough mix-ups basically he's not gonna be close enough uh to the stage in order to get like a lot of jumps on stage with aerials so basically i am completely unfine going for this because i know that let's say they miss their aerial then i get out for free and i can just falling up air after they miss the aerial and i can hit him out of it or like jump up air if uh depends on height in some certain situations but uh i'm super content with just like going for an aerial at a hit stun here rather than going for a rest because i know that the area will hit and risk reward if I miss the rest, then they guarantee get like 30% on me. And in this matchup, 30% is a lot because both characters want to build up damage. Falcon has a really hard time building up damage comparatively to Puff because he has a really hard time of opening her up in general unless he has a grab and it's really hard for him to get a grab because you can just crouch under it. So giving him free stuff is not very good overall. Like, it's actually crazy he got, what did he, how much percent did that do? What the hell? What? <laughs> Oh, that did 27 percent i didn't even know that that much that was lane like 25. that's so much damage he's got 27 percent for free he could have even got more than that he could have gone for stomp and grab and then another another throw at you he you could have even died with bad di like that's how like risk score mm. didn't work in your favor there yeah that's that's a falcon specific thing you don't want to jump at the same time he jumps because usually when you jump into him he will hit you with the aerial before you can uh, the only time it doesn't really apply is if you jump slightly earlier than he does, but it's hard to do that uh, consistently. Oh, the pound in the corner thing again. He actually just waited out. Didn't even try and, you know, try and tag yeah. out of it. It's crazy. Oh, yeah, that was good. Okay, I actually really like your spacing here. This was really good. You wait on the side platform, and then you're like, oh, okay, come at me uh, with the back air. And then he comes at you, you hit him with the back air, and it's like, that's it, that's all you can get. But then you go for this up smash, which I didn't like. Uh, if this was an up air, it would have been fine. Maybe he meant to drop to the platform, but I think he did intentionally mean to up tilt or up smash here, which yeah. just like doesn't work. Cause I was saying about like uh, percents, uh, they'll either like shield, or they can jump out of low percent hits. Falcon and Marth really like to jump when they get hit by low percents. I was actually kind of surprised when he did shield earlier as his first option. So you can kind of hard read this jump and go for an up air, and then you can potentially read his double jump uh, uh, in other situations, or just like read him falling to the ground and falling up air. And maybe you can actually just like get a really big combo and then to a knockdown and then like, you can't rest him at this percent or you lose the game, but you could potentially get a really big combo going in zero mm -hmm. death him. But you went for this like up smash or up tilt, but because percents basically told you no, you couldn't get that. Uh, but let's say he was at 40%, uh, like 45, uh, and back air knocks down. Then you back air, he lands on the platform, misses tech, you up tilt then. Then you go for like up tilt forward smash or up tilt, up tilt, uh, up air juggle, back air, back air, back air off the side, and he just dies. Like that would have been good, but the percents were just wrong for it. Uh, that was actually the area of falling up or thing again. Uh, not falling up there, but the area of falling around. Mm. So, instead of this backer is really good. Uh, so he could have jabbed out of the backer. I will say that again, uh, just so it's not foreign when it happens. Uh, but basically, when they do like the jab out of the backer, uh, what I would do instead of doing this like falling aerial or falling empty land is what you would ideally hear do if you know that they're going to shield like i was saying earlier uh if you know that they're going to try and cc out of it you can just falling aerial this way and there's falling aerial space it 
and then they'll shine or they'll jab in place and do nothing. And then you can just backer them over and over again until they stop just spamming holding down. Uh, <laughs> so people will do that a lot, especially Fox players. They'll just do, uh, they'll try and eat a back here and do a shine, but if you just keep spacing it over and over again, Falca loves it too. Um, but yeah, Falcons will do the similar thing with jab. So if you know that will happen, then you just space over and over again. And they can't do anything about it. Yeah, I don't like that in there. I don't know what that was actually trying to be. But yeah, empty land here. And that would have been really good. Empty land crouch. Um, oh, it's kind of similar. You kind of did like a baby wave dash back almost. Uh, and tried to go for an aerial out of it. If you did like a turnaround grab here, this would have been really good. Maybe try to grab and gun in there. I don't think so. Yeah, it was, I, I'm near near into like uh, like up tilt rest is like always on my. It's one of those yeah. like habits I'm trying to break. It's yeah. Yeah, uh, yeah. Like I was talking about earlier, the players are getting really good at like knowing like narrow happen. A lot of falcons nowadays. I remember like winning like tournament sets versus like decent falcons back in the day, like 2019. Like of just like near up tilt rest and I'm like and. I can't do that anymore. I try and go for an air up to rest against a good Falcon, and I'll just, like, dash out of it. I'm just like, man, mm. this sucks. Or they'll jump or something, and it won't even hit the jump. So, uh, yeah, no, it's not as consistent as, as you might think. Uh, really bad Falcons again, or bad players are really bad at dealing with Pound, dealing with Nair. So those moves will get a lot of mileage, but um, phasing them out early is pretty good because, obviously, long-term is better than short-term. But yeah, um, right here I would sing grab ledge. That's just like a thing I would just do. Yeah, that. that that's another thing I I didn't know that was like regularly done, and now I'm trying to add that more in. Yeah, because I, I was I was noticing I was getting hit a lot from doing this. Yeah, no, it just grabs it faster, and also you can grab it backwards, so it's just good to just like get in the habit of doing. Because there'll be times when you um are backwards here, and since your instinct is to jump. And grab the ledge instead of seeing it then you will just be stuck in this awkward loop of jumping backwards and then trying to grab it and then uh a character will hit you with a shine or something when they really couldn't have if you uh yep. singed every time uh, sometimes you will get hit or like you potentially mess up the sing and die but i would so rather mess up the sing and die than get hit uh for just taking forever to grab the ledge uh every time it's like i'd rather fault my own execution than fault like not being like good enough at the game to try it essentially it's like missing a ledge dash with fox or something oh you should have been able to catch randall there with just a back here uh with the wall jump stuff just wait out the wall jumps and just like see when they're they're down to come up like right here i'm just waiting and waiting and waiting I'm like all right wall jumps are done usually they will not go for another wall jump here if they're really crazy they will but I don't know what the forward smash was. I would just wait. And then instead of forward smashing here, I would jump off the side and just go for a falling uh, falling fair. And I would just usually go for a weak fair. And it would hit. And it would just be really good. Worst case scenario, I'm already down like here-ish. And I just DI to tech the wall. And then just strong fair out of it. Whenever someone's cornered, I want to get them. Or like on the ledge, not cornered. Uh, I already talked about the corner. When they're on the ledge like this. I am basically not trying to keep them on the ledge forever. Some characters I'm fine with, like it's Peach, I'm down to let her on the ledge forever because she can't get off of it. Uh, Samus uh, is also the character I'm kind of fine with just chilling on the ledge. Uh, Falcon's not one of those just because he has enough options uh, that are really good off of the, the hack stash that are scary, like grab and like uh, short up aerial. So I'm like, I'm gonna wait here and I'm gonna try and grab as like the biggest one, or I'm gonna try and like forward smash, up smash, uh, or down air. Down air is a pretty big one. Uh, I like doing it against she Hungry Box does it a lot lately. I've been seeing it doing it with Jamook. Where I'll just down air around the ledge and then throw him off stage again. Because if you go for like a back air, like I was saying earlier, they just hold down uh, and they'll just go back to the ledge anyways and you just reset the situation. So most of the times around the ledge, you want to throw them off stage again or hit them with a move that they cannot get out of uh, with a snap to ledge, like a, an up air, down air, uh, like a nair was able to let, let him get uh, another try essentially, or a back air gets him another try. That's a, that's a big thing with Puff. Oh, almost had that. That was really good though. 
So like that time you actually like full committed with with this uh, drift too. It was really sick. The other times you would do like you would do back air here and you wouldn't drift all the way here. You would drift like here with with this mm -hmm. back air and this was really good awareness. So you try to treat it like a combo. You actually almost had it. If you were a little bit cleaner off of this situation, you definitely weren't fast as as fast as possible here. You had this for sure. Sometimes it's hard to like recognize like, oh, I'm going to edge cancel here. Unless you're like super, super confident in your game. It took me a while to be like, I'm going to edge cancel here forever. All right, I'm gonna look a little bit at like a Martha or a Fox game and then uh, we'll call it there. Let's see. I just wanna see if there's any Fox games you lost, but it doesn't really matter, honestly. The same things will happen in the Fox games you went to. Let's look at this one. Um, never do short hop, never do um, fast full nair at a hit stun like this. If you want to do a fast, uh, like a move like this at a hit stun, you always want to do down air. Um, fast full nair kind of just sucks as a move in general. You only want to do like uh, fast full L canceled nair whenever you're going for like a weird mix up in a combo off from an up air. Sometimes I do up throw up air falling fast full nair L cancel regrab. It's cheese though, because it's not a real combo, but sometimes you, you throw in like the knowledge checks and uh, see what happens. But I don't like it there. Uh, if it can style hit some. That was a really good upper to get back in the center. You do the pound again. Uh, again, one per game, pretty big. But um, this this upper is really good because you can't really deal, do anything about it. I and mean, if he shields here, it's like not the end of the world for you. And he just takes center off the upper, which is good. What I would've done though is I would've just kept drifting here. I wouldn't have tried to go for another hit. You can't get greedy though in a spot when you hit them with the upper. Um, you can maybe try and hard read a double jump, but or like a jump here, but like, I don't know. I don't really like doing it with back air either. And also you do it like so far in. If you want a back air like this, um, I would just back air like over here and use like my full disjoint like you were talking about earlier. Uh, this would be a time to try and use the disjoint because let's say um he just tries to go for like let's say you're at 50 here and he goes for just like take the up air and up smashes out of it since you're so spaced in here you actually get hit by up smashing and and if you're at 50 you could potentially die with bad di so that's just like a big thing to think about is when um like i was talking about earlier they uh at low percent what are they going to do out of hits uh sometimes they will do an up smash if they think that you're going to continuously hit them uh, like that but he did not. He tried to land on the ground and shine for some reason. It was really weird. Darn, no. <laughs> yeah, that's this is this is what I'm talking about. Yeah, no. Uh, I usually like to uh, short hop, double jump it, but it's I sometimes I do a full hop as well too. Sometimes it feels weird to full hop uh, and go for the, the up the wrist. Uh, I actually don't really think too much about how other people do it, but I sometimes like doing two short hops. It's probably slower, but realistically. When they're closer to the ground, they actually are easier to die most of the time. But also, when you do it as slow as possible, then they can jump out sometimes too. Uh, I like doing full hop when they drift uh, slightly uh, so I can get it better. Because I can't really time two double jumps as easy. Um, but when they straight up like this, I just do two double jumps. Mm -hmm. uh, and also, because <laughs> I do two double jumps, whenever I miss, whenever my controller or slippy eats my delt my first jump i just can pull up anyways so it's pretty fun but yeah uh, definitely grind out the bread and butters it's like i've definitely messed up the rest like multiple years in so i understand it uh, but shouldn't really happen too much realistically especially on no di it's like kind of a gimme okay that's the same thing i was talking about when you get like the knockdown like you went for a back here here instead of like uh like you could go for a dash deck here for sure on the reaction yeah i don't think you could really jab reset maybe you can go for back here and then when you react to miss tech here you can maybe jump and rest uh the miss tech it's pretty hard honestly i don't think it's really feasible uh mm -hmm. but again if you're gonna go for like a backer here why not go for like a falling up there instead is also a thing 
Uh, again, though, like I was talking about, like, you do have to be like, oh, am I too late to go for a falling up air? And then, like, kind of judge whether you should re-roll in. Uh, space yourself for, like, a dash, uh, for, like, a land, and then dash tag roll away. Uh, rest attack in place or grab attack in place, etc. You could also, like, the fact that you landed after the back air and you saw the mistack, you could just forward smash it, too. Uh, that's really fun. I like forward smash there a lot. Especially when they tech in place. It also covers second place, so it's pretty cool as well. Again, um, Nair percents didn't really make sense to Nair. Let me use that like mid percents because it doesn't lead to anything. And there's just better moves to go for here. Like up air is a better move to go for here because it could lead to rest. Nair can't really lead to anything because you actually Nair'd him and he was in the air and he still had time to get on the ground before you and Chad you out of it. So it was pretty sad, honestly. I hate how Nair works. I wish it was a better move. It's really cool to fun. And you fun to use, but unfortunately it's not. Okay, that was completely fun. You don't have to necessarily hit him for uh, going for a high risk option. You can just take center, and that is cool. Uh, that was a fine jump read. That was okay. Again, still a little bit too far in with the back air. Um, just being safer is pretty cool. Um, I would shield here and try and power shield grab. Uh, that would be fine. The power shield also kind of makes it so they will miss their shine a lot of the time. Like, if you power shield here, there's no way they can shine after this nair. Uh, and they'll be like, oh, I hit a shield, I have to shine. And then you can just grab them after the shine, which is really cool. Or, if it was on the other side of you, you could up smash after the shine too. Hungry Box does that a lot. It's pretty hard, but honestly, that one was pretty easy. Just, like, crouch, react to them f uh, way above you. Also, whenever someone's really above you like that, you can just wave dash out of the way and try and forward smash them or grab them as well, too. You can do that as well. Either one was fine, realistically. Uh, it's, again, uh, a thing about judging whether you should wave dash away or stay in shield or roll or something like that based on the fact of, do they have enough time to react to that so I can actually get out of the way properly and not just, like, get hit when I was trying to move away? Because that'll happen sometimes. You're like, oh... I thought I had enough time and I didn't. Uh, that's a pretty big part of melee too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, that's what I'm talking about. One again. <laughs> yeah, like right now I'm trying to get a drill in my head. Nair is kind of fine at the percent, but again, it's like you got a Nair here and you couldn't get anything off of this. It's pretty hard too. The fox, if, if the fox can hit one tech, man, there's no way you're getting enough off of these off. <laughs> you cannot get anything off this nair if he hits the tech here, which is really easy to hit a tech off that nair. Uh, if you were lower to the ground and so is he, you could sometimes nair forward smash, expecting a missed tech or a tech in place. I do it a lot, I will say. Um, so it's it's still good to do a high percent, but gra I mean, drill is like a, is the future type of way to do this type of stuff. And I do a lot of drill high percent too, but um, I still do Nair. But you actually got a hit because you missed the tech there. If you hit the tech, you shouldn't have gotten a hit there. You should have actually gotten hit because uh, Fox, when he tech rolls away, he usually uh, is able to get something out before you can. And it's basically about you setting up positioning on him and not really trying to hit him for tech rolling away most of the time. Sometimes you can hit him for tech rolling away. Sometimes you can't. Depends on your spacing. It depends on his. Most of the times you can't. That was another area of flying up, or actually I'm surprised it worked, but you see if um, right here he can actually shine you before the up air comes out, because the fair didn't put you in that much hit sun. Uh, but also after this up air, he didn't hold down at all. He went flying into the air off of an up air that doesn't even knock down, and he was still like basically almost actionable to, to hit you after this. He could actually just run away and just run back in and grab you after your grab whiffs but mm. basically if he just sat there and held down and just shined you you potentially lose your stock for going for aerial falling aerial there so it's definitely something to consider um bad again the lower you are these types of situations come up a lot that's why they're ingrained habits like the pound aerial falling aerial i'm just like trying to you know yeah yeah uh basically get you out of it before it's like too much uh time passed wow okay 
Okay. I like that. Is I like it? that forward smash. That was pretty good. Uh, you can also grab there if you're expecting dash. Grab is sometimes better. Uh, percents wise, let's say he was at 90. Forward smash is better because it instantly kills. Um, what were you about to say? I was going to say this. This is a tournament that's run every week called Only Noobs. So it's like you know people of very like just learning slash trying to get better kind of stuff. So I think that's why both of us are flubbing all over the place. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Yeah, that, that's that's fine. Obviously, I was just um, I just like to introduce like things that are pretty important for later. Yeah, yeah. Oh my god, the pound worked. No, <laughs> that, if that was the one pound for the game, that'd be nice. That'd be really nice. That was a good combo though. You treat it like a complete combo instead of like doing the scared type of back here sometimes against the falcon player. This would have been really good if you. They grabbed the right way. Nah, maybe you tried to land here, which is it, either way. That was really good. I like that a lot. Watch the end of this stock. It's, oh, again, that was the the knockdown situation I was talking about earlier. You know, to know that it knocks down at fifth at was it eleven percent? I think so. Eleven percent. Then you have to wait for the tech animation to be over, or sometimes you can just down B right here, but you can't jump and do the down B. You have to just down B. Yeah, yeah. So that's a big distinction there. But yeah, if he was at below eleven. Sometimes you can go for up tilt re grab or like up tilt up tilt, and it's, or just raw up tilt rest sometimes. But yeah, no, uh, I was I feel like that was pretty good. I mean, the big things are pretty obvious for sure, which is good. Um, yeah, yeah, I think it gave me a lot to like look at my own replays and understand what I'm because that's the only thing is like I need to know what's you know I kind of give me an idea to like look, to look out for and what to pay attention to. Like the uh, double falling up airs and all that kind of stuff, because that's stuff that like I, that I didn't, I don't even know that was like a bad thing until because yeah. like, there were some stuff of like some matchups where like very specifically in the Bible it's like never, you know, basically do the double falling aerial towards them ever kind of stuff. So I think that makes more sense when it's was explained while watching this uh, replay. Yeah, no, basically how um, I would try and like get better at this point is I am a big fan of watching like the top player VODs when you're like at this level. Uh, that's what I did. I just would watch Hungrybox and like Prince of Boo all day uh, whenever I'm doing analysis. I wouldn't really watch my own stuff too much. I would just have someone tell me what's going on. Essentially, I'd just be like, yo, homie, can you just watch this for two seconds? Be like, am I bad? And they'd be like, yeah, you shouldn't do like X, Y, and Z. You shouldn't pound from ledge. I'd be like, oh, true. Like I would just hear on commentary like, oh, why is he pounding from ledge? That's really bad. I'm like, huh? But uh, yeah, it's it's pretty simple when someone tells you. But and when you're watching your own gameplay, there's it's pretty hard to discern it when you're just starting out in the character for sure, especially when the puff bible isn't is pretty abstract, in a lot of ways. But yeah, I would just watch like hung, uh, hungry box odds. I would be doing more solo practice than playing, um, getting the bread and butters down, uh, one pound per game, a uh, bunch of the other stuff, aerial falling aerial, um, taking your time in the corner. Uh, thinking about you know, risk reward, knockdowns, corner situations a lot, but yeah, uh, don't have anything else. Is there any uh, specific tech? Like, if you, I don't, I don't know if it's kind of like putting you on the spot or whatever. Is there like a couple tech things that you would consider like the most bread and butter to start learning first? Like, obviously, there's up to resting, you know, being able to never miss a you know jab reset rest uh, stuff like that. Is there anything else that you would? in that thing i mean obviously there's probably an infinite number but maybe stuff for early on it's like priority is 80 percent l cancels in any any of the three games it's number one then it's like wave dashes they have to be clean enough to like not be terrible that's like probably number two then it's up through up air regrab is like number three i'm pretty fresh on this stuff because i practiced on the box for a little bit so i had to relearn the game i was like okay how do i do this it's like those... mine comes tomorrow <laughs> yeah and, uh, it's 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 pretty fun honestly um i will say i kind of like puff on the box but also i was i'm too far into the game where i had to relearn a lot of stuff so it's uh mm. too much i was going to genesis so i was like oh, i'm not doing that but um yeah so those are the big three then uh getting like tech chase rest is kind of number four but honestly the grounded stuff is pretty is a lot better like the jab resets uh resting tech rolls on the ground, um, forward smashing, way dash back, forward smash, uh, up smash out of shield is a big one too. Uh, so that's like defensive stuff, like way dash out of shield. Like those are the probably like big four or five I'd focus on. 
Uh, shield drops are really good too, but and like wavelands, but that stuff is like, it's you don't need that to necessarily win right away. You, like like you were doing it like the drop through stuff. Like that's kind of fine for right now. You don't necessarily have to have a, like a hundred percent super good like shield drops, you know, uh, mm. yet. But um, yeah, those are the things that I'd focus on for sure. All right, cool. All right, uh, I'll uh, see you uh, again at some point. Yep. Yeah, um, thank you. Yeah, Appreciate it. No problem. Peace.